Hi, my name's John. And I'm Allie. And when we finished season two of Fruits Basket, we thought it would be a fun idea to look back at season one and talk about all the cool details that we may have missed from an anime only and a manga reader's perspective. So join us today as we talk about season one, episode four, What Year Is She? Welcome back to another episode of our Fruits Basket podcast. So if you like this kind of content, you want to see more of it coming from the channel, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and why not even ringing that notification bell so you never miss another upload because we'll be posting these every single Friday looking at all the episodes from season one. But with all of that out of the way, where are we starting? Well, we're starting out, we're meeting Kagura. She's so nice. Mm -hmm. She's so delicate. So... She's so delicate, so just dainty and frail and shy. Innocent even. Wouldn't even yes. harm a fly. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. She oh. vicious. <laughs> oh, she <laughs> she's scary. Can we? Sorry. I need to address this because I've never noticed this up to this point. This is probably the third time I've watched this episode. No, it is. Yeah. She <laughs> takes off when she uses him as a propeller. Like she lifts into the air. I know. I never noticed that before. <laughs> like, she has levitated. <laughs> Poor Kyo. I was deceased. Like, it's kind of disturbing how aggressive she is, like, a little bit. But, like, at the same time, I don't know. It hit me in a good place today because it was, like, kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you need that good old rock'em, sock'em 90s humor, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Rock'em rock Sock'em Kagura. <laughs> what were those? Soccer boppers? Yeah. Soccer boppers. Okay, we should talk about the episode. <laughs> okay, I guess so. <laughs> Maybe that's why we're here today. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so, <laughs> to get into the actual episode. So, yes. Toru, we get her. She wants to figure out who all the Zodiacs are. She gets a little hint that there's two other girls, but she doesn't know what Kagura is yet. You know, she doesn't have any boorish behavior. Like, <laughs> nothing really screams hard-headed bore about her. No. no. So, no. yep. But I love that they're using Toru as this vehicle for trying to figure out, like, who all the characters are. And then that makes you interested, too, because mm -hmm. you're kind of living alongside Toru and trying to figure it all out. And then I feel yeah. like this was pushed even further in the manga because the volumes, the Tokyo Pop uh, issues of the volumes, they would start out with a little synopsis of what happened in the last volume and also just like hmm. what the story is. And then they'd have all the different characters lined up with what their zodiac animal was. And then like once you get introduced to Akito, it's a question mark and it would leave you like, what's Akito? Mm -hmm. And so that would be at the beginning of every single volume where you'd see them all and you'd be like, I know that there's more animals. When are they going to show up on the opening page? I'm so excited and yeah that mm. was really fun so it it got even pushed further in the manga i feel like even on top of this because like you were kind of saying i completely agree it's cool how toru is that proxy for the audience how we're kind of experiencing all of this stuff and all of these reveals just like toru is but i also feel like it's really interesting because she has so shoved her own stuff down so deeply that she is literally just like a passive observer who's just supporting the story in a way, even though she's like the main character in essence, and she's the one that we're following. She's the one observing everything. Like we don't really get any of her own stuff, you know? We don't get to see her like personal experience. Like, she shares things about her. It's not like we don't learn anything about Toru, and I'm not trying to say that at all. But in terms of her, like, actual internal experience, like, she gives her opinions. She tells us, like, oh, I can't wait to learn about Kyo and Yuki and everyone. And that's, I'm sure that's 100% genuine, but it also is kind of, in a way, disingenuous because we don't know what's happening when she's, like, not on screen, you know? True, true. That's such a good observation. Okay, 
So, do you think that Kagura and Tolru will end up fighting over Kyo at any point in like season three? Even if it's a one sided fight where Tolru is fighting with Kagura、mm -hmm. or Kagura is fighting with Tolru and it's not reciprocated, do you think that someone's gonna get nasty <laughs> at any point? Nasty? Probably not. I genuinely I don't think so.、Um, I think that Kagura might get upset. I think that maybe she'll be devastated. I don't think that there will be like a verbal altercation though, because Kagura's already kind of admitted to us that she kind of liked Kyo for herself. And yes, she said that like she will never stop like caring for him and loving him and all of that. But I think that she's more kind of level with everything now. And while there can be. There may be that lingering resentment, especially since they were living together while she was still very infatuated with Kyo. I don't think it will turn into like, like Kagura versus Toru or anything. It, there might be like an episode devoted, probably only half of an episode devoted to that kind of situation, but I don't think it's going to turn into like a theme, especially with everything else that's kind of. Ramping up within the show. So, you don't think Toru's just gonna punch Kagura? You know, <laughs> I don't think. From what I've gathered about Fruits Basket, I personally don't think that this is going to turn into a show where it's like like Jersey Shore. <laughs> like... Oh my god! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had to ask because Kagura was like, I'll beat down anybody who tries to take Kyo from me, so. You know? Well,、I、it's fine. Do Toru doesn't even like Kyo. Oh, right. She doesn't even like him.、Will. So it's okay. Never will. Never will.、Yeah. No. Never will. And after that little bit, Kagura's really pushing the limits here <laughs> and starts、mm -hmm. to bring up Kyo's true form. And Kyo's not too happy about that one. That completely flew over my head. The first time we watched it, like, I didn't even like question it. I was like, he's a cat. Like, we get it. Yeah. <laughs> I remember doing the really intense, like, side eye at you when we watched this the first time. And I was like, is, is he gonna pick up the for foreshadowing? No,、nope. oh, okay, okay. And then later <laughs> in season one, when they, they go into a grocery store for some reason, I forget why,、um, and they get into a fight in said grocery store. And、mm -hmm. Kagura's like, Bringing up his true form again. That was、mm. the time where I made us go back and I went, John, what, what's the true form? What's going on? Can we please theorize, please? And this is pre podcast. I tried <laughs> so hard to get you to theorize back then. This podcast was just a vehicle for me to get you to watch the show a little bit more closely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was less astute at that time. Yeah. I was more just. When we were watching it at that point, I was a passive observer of the show who was just kind of like soaking it in, you know?、Mm -hmm. Like just taking the story, not really like hyper analyzing it. Like I would theorize、um, afterwards because I knew that that's something you wanted me to do. And like it was fun, like having those conversations. And like I learned to like to do that, but I didn't have like the predisposition to do it. Yeah, you've never liked theorizing, ever. <laughs> yeah. Ever. I, I had to trick before... this boy into liking to theorize. Like, a trailer would get dropped for something, and I'd be like, what do you think this means? Look at this exact frame. Oh my gosh, there's that thing in the background. What could that be? And John would be like, I don't know, let's just wait for when the game comes out, and then we'll figure it out. <laughs> I was, before this podcast, I was actively against theorizing. Okay, so back to the episode. There's something that you keyed in on in this episode in regard to Kyo and kind of Kagura's destructive nature. Yeah, so Kagura, when she breaks one of the many things that she breaks, like the doors and the table and the ceiling, all because of her love of Kyo. She's not the one who really gets outwardly blamed for it. When they're fixing、yeah. the doors and everything and taping them up, then Yuki and Shigure both start 
putting the blame on Kyo, as does Kagura mm-hmm. to a certain extent. And she even kind of like does a victim blaming thing a little bit there, where mm-hmm. she goes, if it wasn't for you running away to the mountains for four months, then this wouldn't have happened. And that mm-hmm. constant blame on Kyo for something that he didn't even do, and you can tell it's starting to really upset him, like mm-hmm. to the point where he's not even getting aggressive anymore. He's just saying, why are you doing this? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> kind yeah, of thing. It- it goes from like the playful aggression like obviously it's like like aggression and like they're fighting but like in a way it's playful it's comical but when it kind of shifts to him just being like almost exasperated like running out of fumes trying to refute these things that she's saying it it's it's sad to see it's because it's so sad it's so sad, and especially because it's not just Kagura, it's also Shigure and Yuki. Yeah. Where they're all putting this blame on him, and even when Kyo would fight Yuki and things would break, usually it wasn't Kyo breaking them. Usually Kyo yeah. doesn't even start the fights. Yeah, usually when he breaks something, and I say he in quotations, it's usually because it is his body that breaks it Mm -hmm. because he's thrown through something or thrown into something and so people are like you broke it and like technically yes it's his body that broke it but he's not the one that threw himself through the door or he's not the one that threw himself um like into the desks or like whatever else he might have broken onto the table like it's always someone else doing it to him and like everyone Myself included, I feel like when you're watching this the first time, it's like, oh my gosh, he's such a hothead. Like, he he always breaks stuff. Because even I was like, yeah, he, like, he breaks stuff all the time. But because he's always in those altercations, and he's the only one consistently in those altercations, but it's not necessarily his fault in retrospect. He's always everyone's punching bag, whether that's in these physical situations, emotionally like Kagura blaming him for going up to the mountains which we know was a severely emotionally traumatizing time for him yeah and even just him existing as a cat is his fault and he becomes a punching bag for everyone all while he knows that he is going to be locked up in like a year or two the boy can't like catch a break with anyone besides like Toru and Kazuma Yeah, it's no wonder why he opens up to them so frequently, Mm -hmm. unlike anyone else that he talks to at all. And it goes Mm -hmm. to show just how unfairly the cat gets treated. It hurts me a little bit. Seeing him be so exasperated and just so upset about what is happening to him in this episode really punches me in the gut. It's a Kagura punch Mm -hmm. to the gut. Which is a very powerful punch, to be fair. The most powerful punch. (laughs) Oh my gosh. But that was my moment. Your exciting moment was this next conversation between Shigure and Kagura, in which, well, first of all, tell tell me about that juicy Kagura bit first, because what you said about it was great. Girl, so (laughs) Kagura says she's worried about Toru, like, living with Kyo, and that she doesn't like that. And it's like, girl, you should be. Like, you are on point with that one. Yeah. Like, you should be worried. Because she's about to steal yo man. Or steal yo cat or whatever. Like, you may have all, of, like, the cat ornaments and backpacks and stuff. John. But, like... It's a cat burglar. Oh. No. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> you broke me with that one. We're having an episode, guys. <laughs> That's <is> so funny. <laughs> cat burglar. Toru, cat burglar, fan art, won it now. <laughs> no, it just like her with like a black mask on, but like the mask has like kitty ears. Yes. That's so funny. <gasps> That's so funny. I want it. I love that. But <laughs> so that happens. And I'm like, okay. And then her and Shigure are talking and Kagura says... Apparently, you don't understand love or how anxious it can make someone. And I'm like, ooh, curious that she says that to Shigure, Mm -hmm. because I forgot about this conversation. And he goes, 
that's not true. Even I get jealous sometimes. And it's like, okay, I'm sipping on that piping hot tea because <laughs> he is so freaking jealous of Sparrow Boy. Of Sparrow Boy, not even Coretto. He doesn't even get a name. <laughs> no, I love Coretto. But <laughs> no, he's, no he's so jealous of Coretto and Coretto's situation with Akito because I'm determined that Shigure like has a thing for Akito and believes that they should be together and wants to help Akito with whatever is going on with Akito with the God Spirit because I think that Shigure does want the curse to break but I think he wants it to break for everyone including Akito so they all can be free. Maybe he doesn't even want the curse to break. It's it's one or the other. Maybe he wants it. He doesn't mind if it stays, if he can be with Akito. Maybe he wants it to break for everyone else so that he is the only one still part of the curse with Akito. So that they're like the only ones with that remaining bond. Oh, that'd be whack. Just like, like only them actually... having that really intense bond. Yeah. Ooh. 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 That's spicy. I kind of like that. I'm going with that now. Add that to your tea and sip it. Yes. Great. Okay. But then, you know, in true Kagura fashion, she had broken everything. They're going to the store, meets up with Toru. Mm -hmm. They're walking back. And this is just beautiful because Toru, as you have put it, was gassing up Kagura <laughs> before she steals her man. <laughs> Which I loved how you said that. <laughs> she was. I love how she was like gassing her up so much. She's like, girl, like your bond with Kyo is like something special. Like you've known each other since you were kids. Like I'll never have that. Like you guys have something special and I'm jealous. And, and Kagura's like, oh yeah, I guess we kind of do. And it's like, no, you don't. Like, <laughs> girl, no, you don't. We see the foreshadowing. We see how Toru, I forget what she said, but it was something about Kagura truly liking him. And Kagura yeah. does not respond. <laughs> she does not respond to that at all. Like, yes, I do really like him or anything like that. Instead, yeah. she gets this weird look in her eyes that looks like yeah. guilt. And Toru goes, see, look yeah. at you. You you love him. You love him so much. <laughs> yeah. And Toru, that's, I... that's not what that look meant. That was guilt. <laughs> and, like, it's so... Watching it back, like... The eyes, like, that close-up on the eyes is so distinct. Like, it's not, like, happy or, like, loving. It's kind of almost sad. Or, like you said, guilty. Mm -hmm. Whereas the first time, like, looking at it, you could easily just be like, oh, that's just her, like, thinking longingly about him or whatever. Oh, yeah, you could totally read into it so differently. And then you yeah. also get that little bit of foreshadowing where you get a little bitty bit of that fried egg scene that we explore mm -hmm. later in season two after the beach arc. And mm -hmm. that is one of my favorite episodes. So when I see this freaking fried egg scene, I freak out a little bit because it's so good. I love knowing Kagura's true intentions because she's not really that bad of a character. She does have some weird things going on with her, a lot of 90s humor, but having a character who has some selfish desires is so good mm. because she's not a villain. She's just a person no. who's a little selfish. And she realizes it. She knows that she needs to grow and move on and get over this badness. She knows that she is wrong. And she's mm. a teenager. So yeah, she, just like any other person in her shoes, has some bad moments and she's going mm -hmm. to acknowledge them, grow, and move on. And we love to see that character development. Just in general, she's very relatable, but she's not the kind of character that people actively choose to identify with because she oh, kind yeah. of seems rough around the edges. But I think that a lot more people than would want to admit it can see like, yeah, I've I've been a Kagura before. Exactly. Like, Exactly. I have said it on Twitter before that a lot of people think that they would be Toru in this story, and that's why people hate Kagura, 
because they're like, I would totally be Toru, but like, no. A lot of them, and myself included, would all be Kagura to a certain extent. We've all been mm. a Kagura and that's okay. Cause she's a kid yeah. and she's learning and we learn and we grow too. So it's okay if we were a Kagura. And it's not like saying being a Kagura is bad because she has a lot of good qualities to her as well. Mm -hmm. Especially like as we learn more about her, she's able to be introspective. She's able to be humble. Yes, she can be a little bit crass, a little bit hard headed, especially played up for kind of the comedic effect in this episode. Cue the propeller. <laughs> but like, she just inherently is someone who's just trying to figure out this whole relationship thing while also dealing with the Zodiac spirit. And maybe she's just has a lot of that pent up aggression that she doesn't know how to deal with. So she displaces it. And it's just a bad defense mechanism, which is so human. Yeah. I don't know. I respect her character a lot in how it's written, even though, like, I can see why she, it might annoy people. I didn't like her the first watch through. I mean, there's a reason why she always pulled at the bottom of the popularity polls. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. and there you go. <laughs> but I don't know. We're Kagura supporters. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I dig it. I dig it. I support Kagura. And then after that, we get our first rooftop scene. And it's so fun to compare Ooh. this one to the one that happens in season two during the Momiji Momo episode. Mm -hmm. It's just like the, the growth, how different they mm -hmm. are as people and how much closer Kyo and Toru have grown and her ability to walk on that roof way better. I mean, go girl. So <laughs> killing it. She, we snaps. love it. <laughs> But then Kyo gets really excited over Cosmo. We get to hear about Cosmo for the first time. And the look in his eyes and his little blush and his little toothy grin with his little cat tooth is so cute. This is the first time, isn't it? Yeah, we didn't hear about Cosmo before. Oh, best dad. Best dad. Best dad. Mm -hmm. And I like it because he is actively talking about him like he is his biological father. Like, he is definitely his dad at this point. Oh, definitely. But he is talking about him like a proud son who is like, I love my dad. My dad is the coolest. Like, you need to be my dad because he's great. I think that's such a cool thing for Kyo because we see him so often just very down, very pessimistic about so many things. And I think that this is one of the first times, if not the first time, that we see him actually get happy and excited in the series. Oh yeah, and Toru even points that out. Like, I've never seen him so excited about something before. Oh my gosh, yeah, he doesn't yeah, yeah. want to just beat Yuki. He really likes martial arts. But The growth. <laughs> the growth. But then the next day, we get Kagura, and she turns into the boar <laughs> from that man that Yuki oh so suavely gets to leave. <laughs> Yo, his tie wasn't even tied yet. Like, it was just, like, draping like a cape. It was... So smooth, Yuki, best boy. Just saying. Just saying. Okay. Okay. We need to see more of that. Because we haven't seen something that smooth in a while. I feel like if he did that in front of Kakaru, like, Kakaru would lose his brains. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Wouldn't he? I mean, maybe. Maybe. I think Kakaru would be like, yo, teach me how to do that. Like, this is ranger training. <laughs> <laughs> they do suave ranger training. <laughs> yeah. How to be like, suave Kakaru, like Yuki. Yeah. Kakaru teaches Yuki how to dress in like the cowboy attire. Oh, and yeah. Yuki teaches him how to do the smooth like glidey hand thing. <laughs> the cowboy attire. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Make it end. <laughs> okay. But Kagura turns into a boar. And I love Toru's reaction. It is so cute. <laughs> when she goes, I figured it out. I know what she is now. <laughs> and the the voice that she's using and just how like smug she is. Like, I figured yeah. it out, Shigure. I knew all along. It makes so much sense now. Let me explain why. <laughs> it's so good. It's so unlike we and normally Shigure's see Toru. Just like, <laughs> and Shigure is just like, it wasn't that hard. 
when she transforms in front of you, can't really say that you figured it out on your own at that <laughs> point, girl. And then Toru throws Kagura a curveball. She says, I want to be like you and see the good in people, even when it isn't obvious. Talking about her love of <laughs> Kyo, her newfound love of Kyo, because he has now shown her all the good parts of himself on the rooftop and all that. Cogger's getting a little jealous. And I love that Toru specifically says that she wants to be able to see the good in people when it isn't obvious like Kagura, because, oh, homegirl, that is not what happened. <laughs> No, no, no. Kagura, like, accepts it, too. I know. She's like, oh my gosh, you think that about me? Good. That's what I'm trying to get people with. <laughs> to be fair, I think it's easy to diss on Kagura. I guess we're defending Kagura again here. But, like, it's easy to diss on her for running away from Kyo after seeing his true form. But, like, me at that same age, same situation. I would have gunned it. Like, honestly. Well, Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I would not be that accepting up front if someone turned into a smelly monster in front of me. I'd be like, mm, this is not what I thought life would be. I understand that I turn into a boar and that's strange, but this is extra strange and also smelly. So I would like yeah. to leave now. <laughs> yeah. And like, it could be argued like, that she knows about, like, changes and, like, the Zodiac curse, but, like, she was still a child. Yeah, she like, was still a child, and it is also kind of hinted that not everybody knows that Kyo turns into that. So. Yeah. I don't know. Personally, I... I feel like I would have been... Maybe that makes me a bad person, but, like, I would have been in the exact same boat as her in terms of that, and so... Yeah, I don't know. I'm continuing to defend Kagura as a character just because she feels very human and very real life. Kagura takes her leave and we get Yuki and Toru and they're talking about gardening at the secret base. And Yuki mm -hmm. mentions that he is going to start planting strawberries and we get the first Toru blush that I can think of, at least, where people started to ship Toru and Yuki, mm. like, mm, she's blushing at things. Which is then immediately followed by the first head bonk from which, Kyo. Which was a bigger blush. That was a bigger blush. And a look Just away. <laughs> but, okay. So, we know that Kyo head bonks a lot. And yes. I've seen some murmurs on the internet that there might be a reason why. So, as we go through season one, I want to look at all the head bonks. And I want to, like, dissect them and figure out if there is a reason why Kyo does the head bonks. So, do you think that there's a reason why he might have head bonked her at this point? He does uh, tell her that they need to get going. I have no idea. Okay. I I'll be straight up with you. I don't even have, like, a... <laughs> That's okay. I, I hit you with this one. But we'll be looking um, at that next head bonk, and I'll bring up this one again. So... I feel like maybe just because she's being, like, supportive of the people around her, and that's, like, cool to him. I don't know. That's the best I got. Okay. Right. But then they go to school, Toru gets a yep. call, and next episode, she's gonna be going to her grandpa's house. So, is there anything else that you had that you wanted to talk about specifically about this episode? don't think so. Nope, we're all good. Okay, all I've got is that we are four episodes deep now. I am severely having a withdrawal from Kakaru and Machi, and I, I just need more of that in my life, and I know I won't get in season one, and it kind of makes me sad. That's but. not true, John. At the very end of season one, we'll see oh. a singular scene of Kakaru and Machi. <sighs> <laughs> But that'll do it for today's episode, guys. So if you like this kind of content and you want to see more of it coming from this channel, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and why even ring that notification bell so you never miss another upload. And make sure to share this video wherever you like sharing things. Also, we have a really great Discord with a really awesome community. So if that's something that you're interested in, come join. It's in the description down below. Come chat with us. 
So, as always, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, a fantastic rest of your week, and why not even a fantastic rest of your month. And we will see you in the next video. Later. See ya.